I talked about Lucifer in one of my earlier videos and that was a trip. I went over how this one weapon took several years for Devil May Cry players to tap into its hidden potential. But with great potential comes a great chance of carpal tunnel because you'll be practicing combos with this weapon for hundreds of hours just to get a good understanding of advanced play. Between learning how to use the pins to understanding how to utilize Lucifer glitch consistently, I can say with almost complete confidence that Lucifer is the hardest weapon to master in any action game from my personal experience, which is in insane when you think about it. The weapons in the DMC series are all kinds of crazy and rarely any of them offer that much depth. Most devil arms are very straightforward and don't offer a lot of gimmicks. However, there is one weapon that I would like to talk about that rivals Lucifer in terms of depth. And that weapon is not Nevin. I'm sorry Nevin enjoyers, but you're gonna have to take a back seat for a while. Maybe I'll go over this wacky weapon in the future. But for now, this video is all about Devil Sword Dante and the Sin Devil Trigger form. I would also like to point out that I talked about DSD before in my retrospective video about Devil May Cry 5, but in this video, I'm gonna go far more in depth with this weapon. When you stand both Lucifer and Devil Sword Dante side by side, Lucifer could potentially do more if you had 100% total mastery of the weapon. However, it requires a lot of planning, timing, and you have to have a brain of a supercomputer. So if you're like me that has two brain cells, one that focuses on action games and the other focuses on art, then you're, you're kind of stretched thin. Thank Thankfully, DSD cuts out the crap and allows you to come up with elaborate setups without too much of a problem. And this right here is the biggest strength of Devil Sword Dante when you analyze both this weapon and Lucifer. It's not obtuse. It has a very clear design for you to understand on the surface level while also having more than enough depth for you to explore. It's practical in many different ways and best of all, with DSD equipped, this weapon can easily let you adapt to almost any specific situation that you're in, making it one of the most, if not the most versatile weapon in Devil May Cry. When you use this weapon for the first time, you may think that it behaves just like Rebellion or Sparta having regular melee attacks with the ability to conjure summon swords for additional damage. Maybe you didn't think much about the swords at all, but if that's what you thought originally, then I'm about to blow your mind on just how much this weapon has to offer. I'm going to try to go over everything that I know, so if I miss something in particular, feel free to comment below. When you compare DSD to Sparta and Rebellion, all three weapons have the same attack streams with some exceptions. While Sparta and Rebellion have melee attacks which are tied to Swordmaster, at least some of them, all of these moves are available with DSD for you to use with any style that you selected on. That way you don't have to constantly worry about switching between different styles in order to use these moves. However, with Prop and Shredder, it has been made into a combo string rather than a immediate option for you to use. But you don't have access to drive like you did in DMC3 or 4. With it being absent from Sparta and Rebellion from this game, it makes its return with Devil Sword Dante. Luckily in this game, you don't need to be in Swordmaster mode like you needed to be in DMC4. Admittedly, for the first few weeks of playing Devil May Cry 5, I stuck with Sparta instead of using DSDs while other players started to check it out. When I first tried to get into the DSD gang, I fumbled a bunch of times trying to use Aerial Rave only to witness Dante awkwardly jumping around like a, a dummy. But with enough time, I got used to it, but man, I, I still get tripped up sometimes. And it also doesn't help that I play DMC 3 and 4 in my spare time too, so muscle memory can get confusing. Instead of melee attacks, what awaits you when you switch to Swordmaster mode or Dante's Conjured Swords? There's four-handed, high times, stingers, and round trips. All of these moves have their own unique property. With four-handed, Dante summons swords that swirl around and attack anything that's in front of Dante. They don't deal a lot of stun, so spamming them repeatedly will be just as effective as slapping a demon with the overly cooked noodle. However, their strength lies within the ability to prevent demons that you fight to be knocked away from you in the air, or just in general. With this knowledge, Forehand can turn Stinger into a move that actually leads into something else. This also applies to high times and stingers. With high times, you have the option to knock enemies in the air. 
This move comes out really fast and can be used in quicker succession than forehanded. And as for stingers, this move takes a bit longer to end, but it also pushes enemies away from you. Both high times and stingers can let you control a crowd of demons if they don't have much super armor. Since all of these moves are fairly weak, they don't do a lot of damage, but their greatest strength is just interrupting enemies around you, as well as causing some knockback with both high time and stingers. Although it depends on the enemy that you do this to and if they're in devil trigger or not. Like with Impusas and Helkinas, you can use the swords to keep them in the air or just knock them around depending on what you want to do. But with Hell Antonoras or Proto Angelos, you cannot use forehanded to keep them suspended at all. So you have to be wary of which enemy types you wish to use your summon swords on and when's the best time to use them. Once when you start to understand this, you can actually catch enemies if you find yourself making a mistake within your air juggles, making this weapon extremely reliable. With the main three moves that I talked about, there's also one thing that they're all capable of. Due to how the swords spawn, they will appear in the last position Dante was at when you use any of the three formations. Using moves like air trick, friction, wheelie jump, and etc. allows you to displace the swords. Depending on your timing, you can desync the swords so they appear in a completely different position in relation to Dante. This concept enables you to do things like using a helm breaker and knocking an enemy into forehanded, or using stinger underneath an enemy while having high times knocking them up. Once you know how to take advantage of desyncing the swords, you can get extremely creative with it. Among this weapon's key strength is the ability to use summon swords on demand, eliminating the need for dedicated animations for them. While you had to set up the pins with Lucifer before you got the chance to actually use the pins in gameplay, Devil Sword Dante allows you to bombard your foes with any type of conjured swords at will. On top of this, you don't need DSD equipped at all times when the swords are out. Once you use them, you're free to switch to a different weapon. So let's look at a small example to see what's possible with desyncing the swords. In this example, I desync the swords twice. After using forehanded two times in succession, I then use a combination of high time and high times to launch the Helkina high enough for me to set up two desyncs. After I use ground trick, I immediately switch back to Swordmaster and input high times before I land on the ground, which causes it to appear away from Dante. After this, I make my way towards the other side of the Kaina and then input air trick. Before I appear above the enemy, I then input stingers as I'm teleporting so that the swords will hit the Kaina as it's falling down. And the fun does not stop there because I haven't even gotten to round trips yet. Remember, this weapon is like Batman's utility belt. There is way too much stuff in this weapon. Round Trips is DSD's version of, well, Round Trip. And like with its other types of sword attacks, you do not need to commit yourself into a specific animation for this move. This enhanced version of Round Trips enables Dante to continuously hold down the style button after you deploy a set of swords so that the swords swirl behind his back. This action makes it so that you can damage enemies while they're behind Dante and even juggle them too. It's also much much faster than a regular round trip with Sparta and Rebellion. The best part about this version of round trip is that it is completely independent of DSD. With Sparta and Rebellion, once the sword was out, you can't really do much of anything other than switch to a different weapon or call it back to you. But with this weapon, you can throw them out at one enemy while attacking another. Although you won't be able to use your conjured swords until they come back to you. And just like with his conjured swords, there's also a special technique that comes along with round trips. It is called floating round trips. This technique was found by the style community and there's a pretty well written passage about it and DSD that was written by a user named RK. The same person who went to the demo showcases of DMC5 before it was released and even created a demo combo video from it. You should go check them out by the way. With this technique, you can send the swords in a completely different direction. All you need to do is to make sure that Dante is in some sort of animation state where he's attacking and he needs to be either facing away from the enemy or just far enough so that the swords can deploy without homing in. Taunting also works with this too. 
Once when you initiate the animation, you then let go of the lock on button during this animation and switch to a different style while still holding the style button. This will make the swords fly out without homing in on a target. A more advanced version of this is called split floating round trips, where you separate the sword so that not all of them home in on a target. The easiest way I've been able to get this to work is to lock on right after I switch to a different style. Depending on the timing, you can get one sword to track a target while having the other swords fly in a random direction, which allows you to home in on multiple targets at once. It's sort of tricky to pull off, but once when you're able to understand how this works, it makes crowd control a lot easier to deal with. Hell, by this weapon alone, you can actively fight a group of demons without any major issues, like I stated earlier. While you think that would be all of what needs to be discussed about DSD, I am here to remind you that we still got six minutes left of this video to go through, and it gets crazier from here on out. DSD, on top of all the crazy insane things that you can already do with it, has another feature where the Conjured Swords can strengthen his styles even further. When you hold down the melee button or simply go into double trigger, DSD will give you sword formations on top of what you can already do. The greatest thing about these formations is that you do not need to have the sword selected once it's activated. Just having it in your loadout is enough. While you're in Trickster, this formation is called Reactor. With it, you are given one additional Jump, Air Trick, and Sky Star. It also removes the delay of the previous ground dash when you execute the second dash or the third dash if you're in DT, which gives you the option to cancel it. While you're in Royal Guard, this style is called Escort. When you guard with Dante in this formation, it increases the amount that you earn for your Royal Guard gauge and it will automatically reduce the damage of all attacks that actually hit Dante. If you get hit by a very wimpy attack, it actually won't affect your style gauge either. Now, when you choose for the Gunslinger style, this formation is called Interceptor, which allows you to shoot enemies around you that are not locked on. If you're a filthy zoner, like me, this ability is perfect for you. In a crowd, this ability will push enemies away all around you at a certain range. But if there's a Hell Antonora around, you need to be careful because their super armor can ignore the swords after being knocked away once. Since triggering this ability only happens to enemies that you're not locked onto, you have direct control of when you want to use it against a singular target by simply locking off of them. Taking this into account, you can actually explore numerous approaches to incorporate Interceptor within your gameplay. And lastly, for the best formation that DSD has to offer, that ability is called Chaser. No, no, it, it's not. It's not me. The Chaser is the name of the ability, but never, never mind that. This formation is the best because the swords directly reference Dante's melee attacks. Some moves will be given extended range like Dante's regular melee attacks. Other moves will be given other attributes that make any downsides of a particular attack almost non-existent. Like with real impact dragging enemies towards you, or with idling, summon swords to slam the enemies back on the ground with every launch that you do. The new attributes that you gain allows you to come up with even more varied setups. Because of the way these summon swords work, you still need to be wary of your conjured swords if you want to use your sword formations to work properly. Using any of the conjured swords attack along with round trips will cause them to be unavailable for a brief period of time until your swords disappear. But if you use escort and block, it will immediately return the swords back to you. With this in mind, you can spam these swords like your life depends on it, and you can come up with cool combos too. When you digest all of the information that I have given you, why this one weapon can compete with Lucifer when it comes to potential. Both weapons have a lot to mess around with, but with DSD, you can use it without much of a setup. At worst, the only thing that you would need to do is to charge DSD if you're out of Devil Trigger in order to use different types of sword formations. But again, the best thing about this weapon is that you won't suffer from crippling arthritis from learning it. Of course, I am still not done yet because DSD hands out more mechanics than DSP receives L's every time he played Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, okay, maybe not that much. But anyway, DSD comes with its own form called Sin Devil Trigger. With Sin Devil Trigger, you have access to other skills that are truly unique in this form, such as Ombra, a long range energy blast that blasts demons away, and Sin Inferno, which slams Dante onto the ground and launches enemies high in the air, like extremely high. 
This form also has short range teleports when you dodge with side steps and a long range teleport when you press the circle button. Even jumping in this form allows you to gain a considerable amount of height. And one of my favorite moves in this form is Sin Stinger, which rushes towards a demon in a spiral-like fashion. But if you let go of the lock-on button, you can actually move whichever direction that you want while flying in a straight direction. You can even manipulate it quite a bit by locking on and locking off on the target multiple times. The best part about this form is that when you obtain the quadruple S skill, you are able to phase in and out of Sin Double Trigger without using your entire gauge while also skipping the startup animation. This counts for not only Dante's attacks, but the attacks that you pull off in Sin Double Trigger. A simple example of this would be if you wanted to gain distance from an enemy because it's too close to you, but you don't want to stay in Sin Double Trigger for too long, otherwise you end up staying in this form until the Sin DT gauge runs out. With Quadruple S, you can use Sin DT as a very quick getaway option to go somewhere else. Or you can also use it to cancel a particular move so you can keep up with a specific combo. And when you also summon this form, all of Dante's conjured swords will return to him, just like with the escort sword formation. With this concept, along with everything that I discuss, you can only imagine how great this sword truly is. This weapon has everything. Melee attacks, projectiles, the ability to crowd control a horde of demons, insane combo possibilities, and its own form. The additional use of summon swords in this game really enhances everything about this weapon to an absurd degree. While DMC5 has a plethora of weapons to use, DSD stands above them all in terms of its adaptability. Anyway, I, I think I've talked about as much as I could about Devil Sword Dante. I have Plenty of other topics that I would like to cover in the future. In fact, with this next video, some of you might be a little surprised on what I'm going to be talking about. But until then, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys later, and have a good one.